that we see wicked TRB. Uh, we can move this guy if you want. My uh, blood stoker. Nah. Does it change anything for you if I told you I'm stuck at work too? But it's um. Okay. So it's exactly what I thought it was. Does it make a difference to say if I'm stuck at work too, but this is my job? <laughs> Probably not. If anything, that'd probably just make you upset. <laughs> By the way, fair warning: there's a chance that this might end up on YouTube. This stream might end up on YouTube. So, um, uh, while they can't see what you're saying, they can hear me talking to you. Ah, uh, flush has got to get done on this guy first. All right, well, flush. Don't know what I want to do. It's got to be pale. From cadmium skin tone. Ah, software developer. Um, like, what sort of software do you develop? Because that's just that's a wide range of things that po possible there. Uh, it's just with one thing that particularly there. Uh, when I'm going from uh, black to red, because it's going to be black flesh and red flesh two tone. Um, normally, I'd actually use my airbrush, but um, I'm trying my best because I do try to teach people how to do it without an airbrush, because an airbrush is a huge investment. Okay. Is there any apps right out right now that you could like? Are there any apps out right now that you have worked on that I could just go and look at r right the second if I wanted to? Uh, brand airbrush to use right now, Badger. Though I am also looking at some Iwatas. Um, looking at a wad because I'm looking for something with a much smaller needle, much smaller tip. Um, my best one right now is I have a uh, Badger Patriot 105, which is great for general use, but it's not very good for small detail. Okay, um, Bone Town. If I, if I remember, I recall correctly listening to a podcast once, and I think that game was, I think that game was mentioned, um, and they referred to that as the boob game. Uh, am I mistaken in believing that is a more adult game? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's exactly the game I think it was. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go... F I got to go find a... F I'm going to go find a flesh tone for this guy. Uh, I got one sitting here, but um, I don't want to do dwarf flesh because I want him to have a more sickly appearance. Uh, but I don't want to go quite straight dead flesh. Uh, just one second. I'll be right back.
Yeah, I, I'd ask you what you coded, but um, that's uh, none of my business. Okay, I got cadmium skin, which is um, I don't know, it's a little bit of a neutral skin tone, but I'm gonna mix a little bit of pale yellow into it, and then just probably brighten it up. Uh, we'll see what happens. See what happens when I mix it first. See if I even like the color. All right, let's see. Actually, that's not too terrible. I'm actually mixing in a little bit of uh, that scarlet uh, a little bit of a scarlet red and black mix I have on the palette no one said gross games couldn't be done well <laughs> I just I I I just know of the game because of a podcast that I listen to. Um or used to listen to, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh Well, I have to use a wet palette right now anyways, because it's eighty two in here. Uh, the only reason I can even sit here and work is because I have a fan pointed directly at me. Um, but uh, I like the use of wet palettes anyways. It's good. It's good for what I'm doing. Just a little bit more red. A little bit more red. Alright, I like that. It's probably going to get a flesh wash, and then this is going to be highlighted with some uh, either white or something like that added to it. Making him real pale looking. What? I hadn't heard any of that. Uh, but, um... I, yeah, the podcast I heard it on, I don't know if you've ever heard them or listened to them, was the uh, Blistered Thumbs podcast. Which, if you're not a, which, um, if you're aware of what it is, it was an offshoot of that guy with the glasses. Website. But they had a uh, podcast for their gaming website that they had for a while called the Blistered Thumbs podcast. And uh yeah, that's where I heard of it. So well, they're not arrested. They're not around anymore cuz um their parent company wasn't handling things very well in the first place. They weren't getting good funding for what they needed and all that. So eventually they ended up taking down the website. Um because they were going to roll it all together into uh, a new website called ChannelAwesome.com, which is up now. But it took them well over a year between when they shut down the game website and they started and they put up the Channel Awesome website. And I, I'm at least glad to say that the guys that were originally doing the Blistered Thumbs podcast, one of them being the guy that actually was in charge of the Blistered Thumbs website for a while... Um, they're back and they're doing a different podcast now. 
uh, that's called uh, Word Funk. We talk about more than just video games, but uh, it's still entertaining. There's 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 still wacky guys, and I still really enjoy it. But uh, yeah, you can think uh, you can think of uh, what is it? Austin Yorsky, Johnny Maloney, and who's the other guy? I actually feel really bad not remembering the other guy's name because the other guy, the other guy's like, he's Canadian. I remember that much. He's also what like really made the podcast stand out because when he did the Blistered Thumbs podcast, he started every episode with a with a joke introduction, and in the joke intros. He uh, always made up a uh, fake podcast that they were actually that they were doing. And they always had weird names. <laughs> it was always a hoot though. Bottom 10 games of all time. Well, I can't have never played it myself, but um I mean, personal preference, I guess, but, like, if I, personally, if I want to put a game in, if I'm going to try my best to make a list of games that are that terrible, that I gotta make a bottom tier list of games, um, there's gotta be more criteria to it than subject matter, for me. It's a very fun podcast. Uh, in Word Funk, they don't do the uh, fake podcast intros, unfortunately. Okay, it is bugging me. I gotta find out this other guy's name because uh, I need it. He needs to be credited. He needs to be credited for his insanity. Uh, I th I think if you regretted working on it, I I, I would say if I I feel if you regretted working on the game at this point in your life, that um, maybe the industry you're going into wasn't for you in the first place. It's, that's all I would have to say about that. Uh, Oh, Neon Thomas. Okay, never mind. It was Johnny. Johnny Maloney was the one that came up with the weird thing, with the weird intros. Austin Yorsky is the guy that ran Channel Awesome, and he was the one that was in charge of the actual podcast. But uh, And then Leon Thomas was a the guy they had for a while that left because he fell out of love with video games. All right, that's... That was the team. After the after that point, they had uh, like guests on. But uh, also, don't. And it's like I I sure you know better, anyways. But don't let people's personal opinions of your work just because they feel it's not good stop you from working. Because like I have I have things I don't like, and I have and have and feel like I have perfect legit, legit reasons for not liking them. But I would never tell the people who made them, hey, you know, stop what you're doing. They, you know, because they have their fans, uh, and those are the people that they need to please. It's not me. And sometimes, especially when you're trying to get into an industry like video game development and you know or uh programming or something like that. You don't always get to work 100% on things that 
you may necessarily want to, but you should still put the effort in to gain the experience and, you know, recognition for it. And be proud of what you did, because you did something, and it's more than you can say for some people. <laughs> um, I, I know a couple of the. I, I I'm pretty sure a couple of them played it. <laughs> I've never played it. I've looked into it a little bit, but I've never played it. Though I mostly never played it because it's not my thing. Not because I think. Not because it's not because of the subject matter. And a downside to having a black undercoat like this. While you can see a much better on the on the on the stream, the area I'm working on, I right and, and, and you can also uh, tell that it's not getting covered great. Black still throwing through and stuff, but it'll eventually get there. Well, like I mean, I don't like the. I was like, I'm not a leisure. I'm not a fan of leisure suit Larry. So. And like, while I like Grand Theft Auto, I part of part of it. Part of what makes Grand Theft Auto fun is the violence. So, for me, said it's just not that appealing. Probably should move that off so you can have the black background better. Probably would have been better too if I came in with an undercoat, but I'm probably going to put a shade over this real fast. And I'm probably going to shade over this anyways. And then highlight more on top of the areas that are a little bit darker. So. In the end, it's not going to matter that much. Uh, well, that that's a... Uh, that's one way you can do it. Of course, though, um, evil subjective. Because, like, uh, I play Dark Eldar, and while you know a lot of the a lot of the developers and all that stuff stuff will say, you know, Dark Elder are evil. I mean, what are the evil things we do? Or, what are the evil things that Dark Eldar do? Well, let's see. They go and they raid people and they torture them and stuff like that. But, it's now become their only method of survival. Really? You're you're scaven are totally the good guys, even now that they're part of parts of the hordes of chaos, according to Age of Sigmar.
<laughs> but you can't win. Because according to the fluff, in the end, chaos was going to fail. Because you can't conquer, um... That needs to dry. Um, it's dry before I give it a wash or anything, but that's okay. Uh, in the time that took me to work on that, though, I believe the Korgorath's coat, or uh, Korgorath's dried. Yeah, he has. Um, actually, honestly, I don't need to put a second layer. I don't need to. I don't think so. Let me look around. Make sure. Uh, in the areas. Nah, there's no areas that are too terrible. But uh, this, the color I put down here. Um. I suppose. That's assuming, um... Like, that kind of does assume, though, that, uh... That takes place in the same universe as 40... Or, that takes place in the past before 40K. Um... I mean, depending on how you look at it, they could be considered separate worlds, or, um... Another way I've seen people look at it is that they've said that um, 40k is actually uh, simultaneously going was simultaneously going alongside fantasy, and what had happened was that th these were just little events in the uh, larger larger scheme of things. Kind of like one planet that was more, you know, in the past as far as its technology and stuff. Uh, anyways, um, it's not the only wash this is going to get, by the way. Uh, I'm going to start going back in with a more vibrant red to pick out the higher areas and stuff like that. Um, and again, it's going to look a little weird. But, uh,. After I do that, it's going to get a, probably a wash with Curb or Crimson. Uh, just in those specific areas. Uh, that will bring it down again, but help meld the red together. Then probably one more highlight and the red will be done. Yeah, so far. Um, none of the black flesh has started, though. It says we're going to slowly work... Uh, Highlights with Summer Gray. And then uh, the scars, uh, I'm going to mix a little bit of like flesh into it. But, uh, no, I, I, I absolutely adore the Age of Sigmar models, the ones I made specifically for Age of Sigmar. I just... Um, I wish they had, um, I wish they had considered players' uh, opinions a little bit more, because it really feels like that they, uh, didn't, but, uh, I'm gonna, that for now is actually an okay coverage, it's, some of the areas like in there are gonna get covered with a wash anyways. So, it's not that big a deal. But, um... Hit him with a wash. Let him dry while I continue on the Korgorath. Uh... I'm gonna go to about 1 p.m. Eastern. Then I'm gonna take a break so that me and my son can both get lunch. And then I'll probably be back again.
with more painting. So uh, we got another 50 minutes about. So give me a second. I'm going to go grab my wash and the uh, color for this guy and we'll continue. By the way, that's just a fan theory, not not one hundred percent real. But uh, I'm just gonna take some Reckland flesh shade. I said I'm trying to do this a little bit simpler way, so that when I post it on YouTube, it's a little easier to follow. That's also the reason why I have, uh, for the most part, all my guys fully assembled instead of doing them in sub-assemblies or leaving pieces only attached by blue tack. Something I normally do, I just want to show how you can uh, achieve what you can achieve with uh, some of the most I don't know, basic methods and stuff. And I'm not that worried about it. Pulling too much in some areas, we can always work around with that. That he's covered. And some of those areas shrink too as he dries, so. I need you to stop making that sound with your mouth. Alright. Oh, back to the Korgorath. I got myself scorn red. 